Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Derek. So, I got a longer than normal video here, but there's a lot to catch you guys up on. So, we finished up the Hanks install, which was one of our last installs out west. That's what this is here. It's also what led a lot of you guys to our channel. We started making the long trip east uh, to Texas, it was the first destination to where Big Beard batteries are built. That's what this is here. This is his awesome shop where he slowly charges all the lithium cells and builds every single one of those Big Beard batteries that I install and you see in people's RVs. As we were trying to get parked in front of Todd's house though, I noticed, Lacey noticed actually that RV was making some awful noises. At first I'm like, ah, that's normal because I mean it does make a lot of noises um, underneath there. But this was worse than normal. So I go out and look and we got a broken leaf spring. You can see it right there. It's not taken free from that hanger. It's broke free from that hanger. Got a little MLN coming outside the RV to play. They love being outside, especially when there's dirt and rocks for them to dig in. Anyways, so this is the one that actually broke. I'll end up changing both of them. I could change just the one, but I'll definitely change both of them. I'm not sure how far we end up driving with this. It could have been a couple hours. I mean, the whole axle had actually shifted over an entire inch. Um, so it ended up destroying both the tires that were on this axle. So I had to go and get uh, not only two new leaf springs, but I also had to get two new tires. What makes me think that it was broke for at least a couple hours anyways is it really rubbed on the frame pretty bad here to the point I end up having a guy that Todd knew come and weld it for us uh, and straighten that out a little bit. We got that all fixed and loaded up and back on the road finally with the next destination being back in the panhandle of Florida. That's where the next big install is, which is a big install. Uh, for this one, we ended up deciding to just stay at the RV park um, where the customer was staying, which was Sun Outdoors in Panama City Beach. It was a super nice place. Uh, one of the reasons we kind of decided to stay there is they had nice pools and it's not a big deal to pay for an RV park occasionally if it means that the kids get to play in a pool like this where it was nice and shallow where they could really have a good time more pools need bigger shallow spots like this anyways let's get into the install most re reason most of you are come to this channel is to see the actual solar install so this week it is a riverstone legacy i've done a few riverstones they're super nice rvs um i was excited to do this one because he's doing a very similar system to what we have really the only difference is it's only 5500 watts instead of 6600 watts and that's mainly because it's all the roof space he had so all the victron equipment's going to go on this wall here on uh, the batteries i actually got them stuffed back in there already there's three uh, of the 24 volt big beards that just barely fit behind the wall all there and i mean they're a great use of that space because uh, nothing was going there take you up on the roof here uh it was just getting started the roof looks so nice and clean because he just got a brand new roof a uh, month before i showed up to do this so you can see the fam sitting out over there that's what's nice about doing what i do is my family can be right next door um all day long while i'm working which is awesome so we're getting rid of that satellite dish and then the solar panel here obviously that's gonna go even though i started thinking like could i leave solar panels on the edge to add a few more watts underneath the rack but that seems a little crazy anyways uh then we got the combiner box i already got the wires down from the roof the box isn't screwed it's just sitting here but i got all the wires for all the strings down and then all uh, the wire for the lights that i'm installing also the front panel is going to hit right on this seam, so I'm going to go ahead and seal this all up good the rest of the way before I put that panel there and make it where it's much more difficult to get to it. All right, fast forward one day. I got one side of the rail most of the way done here. Uh, these rails consist of a bunch of different parts and pieces. So, I mean, you got the base, you got the standoff, which they make different size standoffs. And depending on which size air conditioner and configuration with the L foot depends on which size standoff you want to buy. Uh, and then you got the rail and some body splices and all kinds of different hardware to piece everything together. So I get everything built and uh, then I tighten everything down and then I seal the crap out of everything. Seal, seal, seal. You definitely don't want anything to leak. So this RV park is right next to uh, a zoo. I guess you could call it that. I forget what the name of it is. I'd have to Google it. But I've been looking at these two ugly birds the whole time I've been working here. They don't really make much noise unless it's feeding time. Then that one right there will bang his head on the door repeatedly until uh, they come and feed it which is about a half hour before they come and feed it, which you can actually see here, it's carrying something around in its mouth. I'm assuming that's its dinner. So we're getting ready to do the tilted panel. You can see it's got the leg on it there. You got the center leg mounted. That's the support it's gonna go. You can see where I actually cut the ceiling away because it's gonna sit right tight to this. 
But then anytime I build one of these racks and put a tilted panel like mine over there, where that front panel sits, I put a, a thick piece of rubber down. So you know, the vibrating on there is not rubbing on the roof, it's rubbing on this rubber mat. And obviously anything would wear through over time, but that's gonna give you a lot more miles. <laughs> more miles than most people are ever going to drive their RV so but then I'm going to seal this entire front cap um, because it's going to be harder to seal it and I'm just going to seal it all good right now I'm going to actually even cover this whole thing and I'll let it sit up for a while till this evening and then I'll stick that panel right down in that seal and then it'll seal it right to the roof and then honestly there is no movement or vibration at that point to rub through anything but we still here on the side of caution. So, making good progress here, guys. Got both the rails in, uh, except for a little piece on the end there. It's cut, I just haven't slipped it on. There's still a lot of bolts and stuff to put in. I just, I've learned to not do all that till final adjustments are done, or it's a lot to loosen up and redo. So, guys, another beautiful day here in Florida. It's the last full day I got for this install, because I gotta get on the road tomorrow. Hopefully by 10 a.m. they said, so that means like tomorrow morning needs to be nothing but teaching them how to use the system and final testing. So I got a lot to do, but I'm making good progress, so everything's sealed, including self-leveling there, clear sealant where the standoff meets the base, and then I also cover this. There is a seal between the L-foot and here, but I don't trust it for moisture and I get down through there into there through the pipe into the base into the roof so seal 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 because the last thing you ever want is a, a roof rotting especially when that's what holds all this stuff together so so today mainly is just getting the solar panels up here and uh, getting them wired and in place uh, the front two actually are wired already because the front two are the very front slanted one and the next one are on their own solar controllers and then I'm going to have two groups of four behind that. You can see I got them wired to the box under there. Got the box screwed down, sealed. So, full day, but... Uh, as much as I didn't want to, gave them the same lights I got. I just like being one of the few RVs around the country with lights like that, but it also can be my signature. Anyways, it's just lights, obviously. It's just lights. But they're much straighter than mine. I had to do a little bend here to get around the vent there. But mine I put on after all the panels are in place. So so mine really go brrrr and you can't tell from the ground. But these ones, this row especially is nice and straight. So they're 24 volt lights. So I can wire them right to the battery bank. And I'll just got to put a port in for there. But go down to the bay. Let's get the rest of these panels carried up here. I carry pretty much any size solar panel I use up by myself, just with an extension ladder. These are as big as as heavy as you want, though. I forget exactly. I think they were 65 pounds each, somewhere around there, 62, something like that. So you get any wind at all, uh, <laughs> it gets a little hairy when you crest that roof line with the panel. But but it's fine. I've yet to ever drop one. I don't ever plan on dropping one. So get her slapped in place here and get her connected to the other panel and move on to the next one these were rich solar panels or 550 by facials in case anybody's wondering uh, this is the first time i used the rich solar 550s but they seem to work very well so this is the morning of the last day uh, i still got a lot of cleanup to do but the roof is completely done um, i got that all done the lights wired in for some reason i never got any pictures or video of the lights but it looks very similar to mine if you guys have seen the images of my lights take you up here on the roof and show you everything i mean i think it turned out awesome but i'm also biased because i built it but i think every one of these racks turns out awesome now these panels don't tilt but do you need to tilt 5500 watts no i don't think so and they're never going to go anywhere because of the fact that they don't tilt oh just barely clear the air conditioner like i want so we're not adding much height i got them all wired to the combiner box got the combiner box all sealed and secured in place uh, so down here below I got the whole Victron system. I got my sticker on there, like always. So we'll run through things here. So again, this is a big system, very similar to mine. So we got dual 5000 VA, uh, 
quattros. So a quattro means it's got two AC inputs. A multi plus only has a single AC input. So that means I got the shore power and the generator wired individually to the inverter. So it's the transfer switch. So I got those two. I go to the auto former for load balancing. It goes out of the auto former to the breaker panel box. So then we got all the solar controllers here. Again, that front tilted panel was by itself. The one behind it was by itself. And then I got two strings of four on two 250 volt 100 amp solar controllers got all the stickers up here for all the product labels which victron uh it's a new thing victron's doing even some of the stuff i'm buying today doesn't have product labels with it but they're getting there uh behind this wall has uh most of the factory wiring i mean that's what most of this mess is i just put the converters up in here so i got two 70 amp converters taking the 24 volt making 12 volt for the dc system and then that white box is the auto gen start there and the gray breaker box is just where i split the neutral and ground for the two inverters lastly i'll show you guys the batteries here which again i stuffed behind this wall bang my leg opening the door what else is new Anyways, so there is three 300 amp hour Big Beard batteries. So these are 24 volts, so it's 900 amp hours at 24 volts or 1800 amp hour equivalent at 12 volts. So he's got a big battery bank, again, very similar to what I have. Um, so he'll certainly be able to run an air conditioner through the night. And you're not going to be able to do that every single day. I mean, when I say that, I mean you can run an air conditioner through the night, but depending on what you use for solar the next day and if you hit full, how much AC you use during the day, you may or not be able to do that day after day after day. So... Anyways, customer's done, they got out of here, but the last day I was doing the install, I hear this big bang, and I hear somebody say, oh, that guy hit your solar guy's truck. So yeah, somebody towing their big long travel trailer by, smacked the front of my truck. The guy didn't even stop, because he didn't even know we hit it, so whatever, just part of full-time RV life. One of the awesome things about Florida is their awesome beaches, so we did manage to find a night to run to the beach here in Panama City. It's got nice white sand. Uh, the kids love chasing the waves around, so it was a good time. It was it was a good evening to go there and uh, enjoy our full-time RV life because again this is some of the pleasures that we wouldn't get if we just lived in a house in one spot. We actually get a lot of beach time at our favorite beach at our next stop. So that's it for this one guys. We'll catch you on the next one. Please like and subscribe.